Hey guys, welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to upgrade the RAM and the hard disk in the Lenovo IdeaPad 330S. Okay guys, so this is actually a pretty straightforward job. Uh, all we're going to need is obviously the laptop, we're going to need a small crosshead screwdriver and some sort of thin plastic implement for releasing the plastic catches on the base plate and I'm going to use a guitar plectrum but any sort of thin plastic hard instrument will do the job. Um, we're also, if you're going to upgrade the RAM and the hard disk, we're going to need to look at RAM and hard disk specifications, we'll get into that in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is you can see on the underside of the laptop here we've got these screws all around the perimeter and one in the middle. So we're just going to go ahead and take those out. Okay, so with the screws all out, the next step is we're going to use our little plastic implement uh, to prise off the plastic connectors that uh, hold this lid on all the way around. Now we'll say guys, be extremely careful when you do this. Uh, it can be very tempting once you've started to make progress and getting a couple of these um, catches off that you'll then want to just pry the whole thing apart with your bare hands. And if you do that, then you run serious risk of damaging the casing of the laptop, as I'll demonstrate in a second. So it's a little bit tricky. Once you get going, it's not too bad. See, I've managed to get another one off there. There we go, they're starting to go now. So once they start to go, just very, very gently start to pry the case open. And when you get resistance from a latch, just use your plastic implement to just push the latch in and it will release. Now you may not be able to show it here, I'll, I'll overlay some pictures, but right about here on this case, the first time I took the lid off, I was a bit brutal with it and I managed to crack the case. So be warned, if you don't take your time with this, and be gentle, there's a very real risk that you could damage your laptop. As you see, the more you actually start to get off, the easier it becomes, and eventually the whole thing will just lift off. And what we're left with is our laptop. So let's just have a quick talk about what we've got here. So over here you've got the original hard disk, this large black section here is battery. Then over here we've got a daughter board which gives us USB and the SD card reader. Then we've got the cooling fan for the laptop. And then we've got the motherboard here. You can see this green section with a black shroud on the top is our motherboard. Now, if you just want to swap out the original hard disk for an SSD or a larger hard disk, it's very, very simple. All you need to do is take off four screws, one here, one there, and two at the base here, and then the whole caddy will lift out. I'll demonstrate that for you. Now it is important once you get to the inside that you make sure that you keep the screw separate because the screw sizings are slightly different depending on where they go. So just make sure you make a mental note of which screw went where. Okay, so with those four screws out, it's very, very simple. All we have to do is gently apply some pressure and pull the caddy backwards and you'll see it releases from its uh, catchment, its power, its data connectors, and then the whole thing will just lift out. Now once you've got it lifted out, you may be able to see on the camera here, we've got four screws holding the actual hard drive into this caddy, two on each side. So all we have to do is remove those four screws and the caddy will separate and then we install our new drive into the caddy in the same orientation and then putting it back together is the exact process in reverse. We just lower it into the caddy, gently push it in and then reinstall the screws. Now if you wanted to upgrade the RAM or if you wanted to make use of an M.2 PCIe SSD then you need to go a bit more involved we have to remove this black plastic shim. Now to do so, as well as the two screws that we've already removed, we have to remove a screw here and a screw over here. And again, make sure you keep them separate and keep in mind where they came from because they are slightly different sizes.
Now with those screws removed, we can gently pry the metal casing away from the motherboard. And what we're left with is, we can see on our main board, we've got our Wi-Fi card, we've got our processor, our graphics card, we have a RAM slot, and we have an M.2 slot just here on the motherboard. Now M.2 is a great way to increase the performance of any machine, not just a, a laptop, but many PCs come with uh, M.2 slots as well. And uh, they're designed for storage devices like this one, um, which I use in most of my desktop builds as well now. And it's basically another format of solid state drive, but with a lot faster performance than even a traditional laptop SSD. So what we have to do to install one of these is we take it out of its packaging, and then you can see we've got connectors on this side, and they marry up with the socket on the board here. Now your M.2 drive should come with a small screw as well. So what we do is we insert that in there and you'll see it actually, it sort of bounces by default. It doesn't actually stick to the motherboard. So what we have to do is use the screw that's provided to screw into the catchment on the motherboard and we hold our SSD in place while we're doing it. And it's safe and secure. Now, if you only wanted to have an M.2 SSD on your motherboard, you could actually remove the traditional hard disk, or you could replace it with an SSD for you know additional capacity and performance. Now, one thing I've not talked about on this laptop so far is memory. So uh, most configurations of this laptop come with eight gigabytes of memory. And what they do is they have four gigabytes that's soldered actually onto the motherboard, and then they have a traditional sewed in memory slot here. Now, if you've worked with sewed in memory slots on any form of laptop before, it's relatively easy to open. You just pull the two metal tabs and you can see the chip raises from the motherboard and then you just pull it straight back and it's released. So this motherboard, uh, this example of the laptop has four gigabytes on board and a four gigabyte stick. You could potentially upgrade this stick to an eight gigabyte stick giving you a total of 12. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about the four gigabytes of onboard memory, that's as it is. There's no way really to get this system up to you know, a 16 gig configuration. Anyway, with our drives installed, uh, putting it back together is simply doing the reverse of what we did to get it to this state. So we need to take our metal shim and we need to carefully position it over the motherboard. And one thing to be very careful of is on each side of this shim, there's some little silver catchments which I'll overlay in some photos that sit here, here, round the base and round on this side and it's important that the shim actually sits in those catchments because they're earthing the shim and they're holding it in place securely. So let's just make sure, take some time to make sure that each of those four catchments goes in properly. Let's get the back one. And then it's simply a case of reinserting the screws as they came out to ensure that everything is held down securely. Ensuring, of course, that you use the correct screw for the hole that you're using. So once everything's secured back down, it's a very, very simple case of just moving the plastic shield back on top, lining it up, and then gently pushing down so that those plastic latches reconnect. Very gently, all the way around. Until all the latches are in. And then just reinsert the Casing screws one by one. I tend to put all the screws in loosely first, just in case there's any fitment issues, and then once they're all in, you can go ahead and tighten the rest.
And there you have it guys, all finished. Now, a couple of points to note when selecting your replacement drives. If you are choosing to replace the original hard drive with a SATA one, you need to make sure you get one that's seven millimeters thick, not nine meters. So this is an older generation of SSD that I have. It's nine millimeters thick, and it won't physically fit in the caddy there without causing you fitment issues. So you need to make sure the one you get is seven millimeters thick. Most of these days are, but it's important to check. Um, additionally, sometimes when you buy an M.2 SSD, it doesn't come with the required screw. So the type of screw you're going to need to buy from your local hardware store or online is an M.2 5.5mm screw. So there you have it guys, I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, please consider subscribing to the channel. If it wasn't helpful, please let me know in the comments why not, and if you have to, give it a thumbs down. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you soon.